You know, we've had all the big fighters uh, in this very studio, Simon, and uh, they all get a reaction. Of course they do when they're on live. But maybe this Fabio, uh, Fabio Wardley, this fellow Fabio Wardley is in studio with us. Very likeable gentleman, very good fighter, British heavyweight, of course. Won at the weekend in Saudi. Maybe, Fabio, you've topped the skills in terms of popularity, <laughs> mate. Unbelievable. Mm. Um, many people asking me to ask you, what actually happened at the end of the fight against this character, Adley, uh, at the weekend? Because he got one dig in at the ref. Did yeah, I think... Um, Sure it's funny to be honest. I think he threw his best punches after the fight was done at the ref. It was uh, it was an interesting one because I didn't actually notice until afterwards because I got the win. I, my hand was raised. I was celebrating and and so soaking it up with the crowd and things. And then I, once I got back to the change rooms and stuff, my team was talking to me saying, "Did you see him hit the ref?" And I I was confused. I was like, "What?" And then I saw the playback and he he hits the ref about three times. I think when. If anything, he should be should be thanking the ref that saved him there. He, um, yeah, yeah. Should I don't he be know. Suspended for what he did. I think I, th I think so. Yeah, you can't really just like once maybe a little a frustration like nudge mm. push whatever I can is more understandable. I get it, but two three times and they're full on punches as well. He's winding them up and swinging actual punches at him. So yeah, I, for him to not get some sort of disciplinary action from that, I think would be harmful. Well, you beat him. Uh, and before the fight, there was this little feeling that we were talking about that resulted in you getting this massive gash in mm. your chin. And uh, Adley's brother was involved in that incident, and it, he was in the ring in Saudi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Did your eyes meet? Yeah, I saw him. I saw him there. He was there through fight week as well, um, and I saw him in the ring on the night. But I, I'm, I can set that aside for the goal for the task at hand. It's mm. it, it, like that was. It was very clear that that was a. A tactic by them to bring him there, face him up, and bring him to the center of the ring on the night as well to try and stare me down and look at me and get in my head. But I'm, I can set that that emotion of that aside because I always know that the win and the end goal is actually the thing that matters here. All the fun and games beforehand, and all the all the bravado, all the talk and stuff is it all very quickly fades away after a loss. Mm. Once your once your hand isn't raised and yeah, actually the only image that's flying around now is the image of him flat out on his back and me stood over him. So it, the the rest is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Well said. Fabio, I want to talk about the roadmap that lies ahead for you. You're very articulate. So we're going to put one by one to you. Mm -hmm. Give us your take in each of these fighters as to where you think they are. So the guy who won also mm -hmm. in Saudi at the weekend, Tyson Fury, where's he at? He's uh <laughs> Saturday hasn't necessarily done him any favors, I don't think. Um, he's at a, a funny position in his career. I don't know. Maybe he took the fight slightly lightly, or maybe he under underestimated Ngannou. Maybe Ngannou overperformed, and I think in a lot of our eyes he did. He did a lot better than what we expected from him. Um, but I th it's it's going to be hard to say now because if he want if he moves on and goes for the Usyk fight, I think that. Weirdly, the Ngannou fight will hang over his head. It's almost like people want to see him do it again and put the stamp on it. Um, yeah. So whether he comes back to that afterwards... Will it is... not give him a kick up the bum, do you think? I think he definitely should. Hopefully mm -hmm. it should, yeah. Because I think we, we all very much expected him to it not even be... Them not even be in the same realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, where, um, where do you stand in these crossover fights? I think they have their place. I don't mind them as long as they're between two competitors from like i don't mind the crossover of mma and things the more youtube one is the one that kind of grapes me a bit i don't i'm not a massive fan of those ones but actual respective fighters in their own sport and things and crossing over i don't mind those ones at all they have their place would you be confident that you could do a job in Engano, or would he give you problems He'd, he's, he's, if he can give Tyson Fury problems, he can give anyone in boxing problems. He's a big, strong man. Um, he can punch very hard, as you saw on, as you saw on Saturday night. But I'd be confident going into the ring with him, definitely. What about Usyk? <laughs> a special man, a special man. Um, I think his stock off that has, has risen because I think coming off the Dubois fight, people were a bit like, okay, maybe there's some flaws there that we can that can be exposed. And then especially when they thought, oh, if you pair that with someone like Fury, who's bigger, smarter, a, a better boxer than, than Dubois, then he's really going to come exposed. But I think after the showing of Fury at the weekend, that I think that's that's definitely in a lot of people's eyes who are very much more set one way has really evened the scales on that. Where is AJ in the grand scheme of things? Um, I think at the moment he's on the sidelines. I think it's, it's hard for him to try. He's trying to nudge his way in, but 
I think the question mark is why and what for. Although they would like him and him and Usyk was good fights, and him with Fury would be an interesting fight one we want to see. But at the moment, with the way everyone's positioned themselves and the fights people are coming off, like the fights AJ and stuff are coming off the back of. It, it it's not like people are really screaming for him. Um, so I think he has to really try and bully his way in and, and force a way into a fight with these these big boys. Yeah, where, where, where is the heavyweight division at the moment, Fabio? It's in a great place. It's in a great place from top to bottom, I think, because a lot of the top boys are all, all there and we're now getting into the back end where they're all starting to now fight each other and mix in between the fight, e each other. We're getting the fights that we wanted maybe a bit delayed, maybe a year or two ago, but they are coming. And then from people like myself and then even some lower people starting out like Moses Atuma and those kind of guys, we've got great fighters all the way through the board. So the next the next few years of boxing will be very interesting. Fabio, um, it's not often I've heard this man this quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm listening. I know you said to me this morning, mm. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. I'm delighted Fabio's coming yeah, in. I, I can't wait to hear <laughs> him. Yeah, I'm pleased for him. I think and and you are specially you. pleased, aren't no, you? I'm pleased for him. I think that you want to see articulate, eloquent people speak about their sports. You know, it's always a difficult one for him. He's talking about his peers. So he needs to be careful about what he says about Tyson Fury and what he says about other people because they've achieved the things that he wants to achieve. You know, I want to see him step up through the gears. I want to see him get tested at different levels. You know, he's fought people like Eric Molina that once upon a time got into fights that were fighting for world titles, that have credentials. This is a good victory. It's a building block for him now. It catapults yeah. him into a position where it, whether it starts, conversations start about him with the people like Joe Joyce and people in that route. These are the spaces that he needs to be heading for to build towards an opportunity in the next 18 months when these belts get scattered at some point. He needs to be in the right position to have himself an opportunity. And then we'll see whether Fabio Wardley lays claim to being a world-class fighter. So what's the dream scenario? Uh, I think the the dream scenario is a, is a fight at Portman Road. It's one of... I've played around with, with <laughs> the guys. All, I knew you were going to yeah. say. I was going to ask you. Yeah, Go yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> it is because also... Because I've got so much home support as well from Ipswich and from the town, from the club and all my fights are all over the place. So people always have to travel and come to see me. And I always feel like I'd love to give it back to them in that sense and be like, look, this one's at home. This one's on your doorstep. It's yeah. five minutes up the road from you. Yeah. Turn up. Let's let's do this one for the town. For all you people yeah. that have... And we see how much that's done for Chris Billum Smith. Yeah. Yeah, and, it's yeah, a massive thing. Point, yeah. It's Great a massive point. thing. Listen, and you're there tonight, you know? Yeah, I'm at the game tonight. Town versus Fulham in the cup. I'll be there. Um, doing a little parade at halftime as well with my belts and having a little wander around, well showing off and... and Waving and saying thank you to all the people that tuned in and supported me as well. So it'll be great. Fabio, good, good luck with everything. And we'll be following you because thank you. obviously we're, we're fans of what you've done already. I'm a big fan of yours for this and this alone. Will in Norwich, a young journalist. Jim, Fabio gave me my first ever interview when I tried getting into journalism. And he gave me time. I had a boxing page that was very small, but he dominated it. Hmm. He was brilliant to me. Gave me time and I've never forgotten it. Will from Norwich. Do you remember him? I do know him. I do know him. We still speak regularly now. He's, a, he's almost like a good friend now. We do catch up a lot. I do remember him. It was good. You're a good man, Fabio Wardley. <laughs> I guess it, de it depends who you ask, but for the most part, yeah, I think. Impeccable. Fabio Wardley won at the weekend. He was on the uh, undercard of the Fury and Ganu night and he won against this controversial individual, uh, David Adley. But there is Brad. I've just been listening to, to Fabio on the radio. I've never seen him fight. I don't know much about him. What an interview. Smart. Talk about a boxer, presents himself well. He's a credit to his sport. Yeah. Mm. Let's hope we hear more from him. Brad, I'm absolutely well, it's the in same. total agreement with well, we, you. You know, with respect to Fabio, we would listen to Chris Billiam Smith. He's a very artist. There's lots of these fighters. This stereotypical image that they can't convey themselves. Lots of them can. What he is, what he has the potential to be, if he can get his talents to the level, he has a talent. To, he has a potential to be a marketing dream because mm. he's handsome. He's got it all going on. He can speak. And he can punch, yeah, and all of those things, yeah, you know, aided and abetted Anthony Joshua very well. You're, well, right. you're handsome and you can speak, yeah, and hence the reasons why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> Do you think Danny and I are? Handsome? I laughingly say <laughs> he's handsome. Is Fabio still here? Can we bring him back? Oh, you uh, know, I mean, metaphorically speaking. No, 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 I agree. Yeah, yeah there, there's Wes Ham uh, Wayne getting in touch. What a lovely fella you've got just had in in your studio there. Fabio Wardley, he is a credit to his own sport. He is so Simon. You 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 hope a lad like that can make his mark a, a in, in, in well, the boxing world. His talent will define that. 
but ultimately he'll be given the opportunities because he's he's yeah. making it. He's 17 fights, 17 unbeaten. He's just dispensed of someone there was a bit of jeopardy in. He's got people in his headlight in his headlights or in more to the point in his sights. Yes. So I think there's a f- strong opportunity for Fabio Wardley to get himself to the top of the pile, and then we'll see. If an opportunity we'll arose for yeah. him really quickly, uh, you know, from f- for because someone dropped out or something happened, uh, would it would he depends would it be it too is. risky to go uh, in with one of the big I, I boys? I think I think he knows like who Joshua. Need, I think he knows. I think he knows who needs more fights, right. and that's why he's suggesting that another British level fight like Fraser Clark might suit him best. Yeah, because that was an impressive statement. It's one of his best performances. He knows it himself. You keep learning, and I think more. he needs a few more. And he's got time. He's a 28, 29. Look at these heavyweights. You know, the, people are saying Daniel Dubois, 25, 26, is young, really young. He's only a couple of years older than him. He's he's he's, he's a white collar fighter that's come into the boxing game with no background. He's doing quickly, very well, and he's a natural at it. So I think he's got a real chance. I don't think, Sammy, we've heard the last of that pre-fight rumpus that he had with David Adley. Um, I, I think well, he's maybe. I was or, amazed. Maybe. Or yeah. I mean, more accurately, Adley's brother. Well, he's, he well may, maybe. He's a prof- this is a professional boxer that doesn't need to get involved in that. Adelaide needed to create some background noise, and I don't think that Adelaide would have particularly wanted the full extent of what happened to have happened on an undercard of an event like this. Yeah. But the bottom line is, is, is he's, he was unbeaten as well. Yeah. He's got to go and get his career together. He's got some problems coming his way after he yeah. digs the referee in the ribs. Sure. But Fabio Wardley, up and onward for him. Yeah, good-looking lad, as you say. Do you think Danny's handsome? More importantly, am I? Um, depends if I'm looking through the what end of a telescope I'm looking through. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 